Hi, and welcome to allthingsproductions.com. Uh, my name is Fight Ren, and I'm here to make a video about left right EQing and mid side EQing. And this is kind of a beginner's guide to uh, those techniques. One thing that uh, we often forget mixing in the digital world is that in, on an analog board you rarely find stereo channels. I have used to use some other SSL but I used to actually prefer to have a left and a right channel EQ and compressor uh, simply because I can make slight changes to the left different than the right and therefore actually create a little bit of a phasing issue between the two sides making the sound wider. I think that is why we often think that um, as part of the experience of listening to an analog mix that things are a little bigger and wider is that because of the inconsistencies in how we use uh, dynamic processing. So of course we can do that in a digital world we just often forget about it and one way to do that is to use instead of a multi in a stereo plugin to use a multi mono plugin. So uh, let me give you an example here. I have here a guitar. I'm going to let it play a little bit so you can kind of familiarize yourself with the sound. And uh, that is what it sounded like before I applied a left right e EQ. Now, how do you get there? Well, let me pull it off and show you from the start how I actually got there. Instead of using multi-channel or stereo plugins, I'm going to use a multi-mono EQ. Same EQ. By the way, the settings will transfer if you have first chose a different one and then uh, change to multi-mono, your settings will stay. And uh, let's familiarize ourselves with this EQ just for a second. We are familiar with our regular bell curves which are these three. And we also have a bell curve on our low filter and our high filter. But in addition to the bell curve, we also have a shelf. So this is where we choose bell or shelf. Um, in addition to our five EQs, we have two filters, a high pass and a low pass that can also be changed to notch. So um, first things first, for one thing that every sound should have is a high pass filter, except kick and bass. Um, and even there sometimes in certain ranges um, at between 50 and 75 hertz however high you want to go uh, there's nothing down here we need and then we're going to listen a little bit to this guitar and we're going to find out what are the frequencies that work for us that make it sound more natural or work in your mix of course you have to familiarize yourself with the other sounds in the mix and uh, then find out how can we enhance this guitar or what is not so good. So I feel like in the 900 range here, little nasal. Here I'm really starting to hear the beautiful, almost the fingers on the strings. So I will go ahead and I will push this a little bit. I will go into my 900 and I will just take that out a little bit on both sides. I'm going to tighten the bandwidth a little bit and uh, hopefully see, I'm going to experiment how wide I can go and then bypass it and see if that enhances the sound a little bit and it does definitely help. So I feel like it still needs a little bit of what I call air up there, the sizzle. And you gotta be careful with shelving up there because you're going um, up to 20k. But it barely helps the guitar. And it probably needs a little body. Now here, when we talk about body of the guitar, of course if this would be an a cappella in guitar version, I want to add a lot of body, right? But we're in a mix, uh, and I'm not going to play you the whole thing right here, but this mix has pianos and pads and all kinds of things and really thick bass that are all in that low mid frequency, really heavy. So if we add this to the sound, it might sound great solo, but it doesn't make sense within the mix. So let's see what we have down here. Tighten it up a little bit. And I can see that that actually adds warmth here without, right here, without it being boxy. But when I get down here, it gets really boxy and really gets into the bass frequencies here. So what I might want to do is I want to kind of hear, and by the way, this clipping is of course not okay, right? So we're going to lower the input on both, about 3 dB, pretty hot signal. And, um... This is a little nasal here, but this is warm and then it gets boxy. And then it gets thick again. So what I want to do is, on both sides, I want to get right into those low mids and take a little bit out of that. Now it might sound a little thin to you, but remember, we're talking about this whole mix. So I'm going to go under that and with a bell curve, just give it a little bit of bump around 150. Where the warmth of the bass is, 
but it's okay. It makes it sound just a little more natural. Now, how can I use left right? Well, now I need to disengage the link between the left and the right EQ. And I can go in and make slight changes to each side. So let's say, for instance, that we want to create this image of the body of the guitar being more on the right and the strings being more on the left, which would kind of be like um, the guitar's perspective. Or if we say audience perspective, we're looking at a right-handed guitar player, the neck would be on the left the body on the right um, to really spread it out a little bit more. I will have to boost mids and low mids on one side and highs more on the other. So I could go in for instance on this left side and take some of the highs out a little bit or let's, you know what, let's do the opposite. I'm going to boost those on the left and I'm going to take them out on the right while I'm all actually going to boost the lows a little more and instead of taking the 250 out I'm going to go to the warmth that I found earlier and just bring it up a little bit on the right side. And if we now listen to hear the clean signal, we will see that the guitar actually is spreading out a little more. And the more I go into the left and pull this up, the more I will hear how it gets brighter on this side, not on this side, right? Which makes it sound a little bit more like there's more body here on this side. So again, let's go back to this a little bit. Let's spread the mids out on the right. And you can hear a huge image change between the two sides. Just gotta watch out. My right side is getting a little loud because of this very aggressive boost here. So I'm gonna take my right side, just turn it down just a little bit to keep that balance between left and right. Now remember, this also creates phasing issues between left and right. So you should always check mono compatibility. Um, and make sure you're not overdoing it because um, aggressive left and right EQing might cause the phase shifting to happen so aggressively that when you press mono or check in a, on a mono aux that you have a 3 dB or 4 dB a minimum a loss of that signal which will change it quite drastically in, in your mix. So that was left right and the same principle can be applied to um, you know, overheads, pianos, anything that has a natural stereo sound that you want to widen a little bit before you use a spreader plugin. Um, now the other method would be to use something like um, a mid-side EQ. So I'm going to just reset this here for a second and I'm going to change this EQ. And this is Fab Filter EQ, one of my favorite EQs. Um, and I'm going to change it to mid-side. What mid-side will give me as soon as I uh, create a band is it's going to give me the choice to choose mid both all mid and side or side for my EQ so when I listen to the signal when I listen to the signal of these overheads here for a second I can for instance hear that um, I really have more symbols on the sides than I have in the middle I have a lot of snare here kick here Right, and you can even see it on the signal here. We have a kick here, a lot of snare here. So those, there's those are certain things that we can deal with. So let's go in the mid for a second and make quite a heavy reduction. After we set our high pass filter for both sides, right? We can actually set this high pass filter for both sides first, then create another one and pull this one up for the sides to really take. Watch what happens. the snare actually moved towards the middle. Right, so let's bypass it for a second. Snare is over here. As soon as I turn it on, because I'm filtering on the sides only, the um, lows, you don't get as much down there. And the highs are only here, and then it kind of tightens up. So this is a great method to kind of control your overheads a little bit image wisely and it's not really going to interfere with your sound overall too much because if we're honest what we really want from this is the symbols right and uh, aggressive high pass filter like this can really help to kind of manipulate sounds in image and how they are placed in your mix let's listen again I will add an additional sides only 
and we can see how that's really placed right at this frequency here that we're seeing. And the more I do this, the more the snare mo moves towards the middle. Without really affecting the hi-hat, it's still over here. Cymbals are still hitting, tom's still hitting over here. So it's definitely a strong method uh, and can be used for all kinds of things. I'm a huge fan of mid -side, slight mid-side EQing on mixes also for mastering. And um, um, definitely a method you should think about and see how could, how could I use this to uh, control sounds and there's many different placements you can try. Okay, well I hope you, you enjoyed this little uh, video and uh, remember allthingsproductions.com if you ever have a question just go there and uh, sign into the forum, post a question and we will actually create a video for you for free. Um, we're just here to help and uh, hopefully we can do that for you and help you uh, in your production. Alright, have a great day.